This particular project is a challenge, to say the least. It not only has a large area to map, but it has tall, dense vegetation, buildings, flat land, and steep terrain. The altitude changes approximately 120 meters from the highest point to the lowest point. The goal is to keep the drone at a constant distance above the ground at all times. As the elevation of the land changes, the drone needs to change with it. The reason this is important is because of ground sampling distance. The distance between the center of one pixel to the center of another is the GSD. For example, if I need my orthomosaic to be accurate within one to three centimeters, then I need to fly at an altitude that keeps my GSD between one to three centimeters per pixel. Important things to note. Typically, you cannot get more accurate than the calculated GSD, and the drone alone will not give you that level of accuracy. Ground control or scale constraints of some kind are needed. Well, we have to go over our pre-flight checklist now and then finish setting up. I'll be back to discuss a few more details once we're in the air. Mapping a large area is easier if you create sections instead of one big flight plan. You have to make sure that the sections overlap each other by one or two flight paths. This is even more important when you have an area that looks the same all over. Since this area is so large, we have to fly a little faster than I would normally. I'll set the camera to take pictures every two seconds, which will give me more than enough images for the dense vegetation. Next, I'll set the focus to manual so that it won't change. I'll leave it on auto land because that's what will make the drone return to home when the flight path is finished. I'll leave the yaw at auto, but change the gimbal control to manual. That way I can turn the camera up to get a better look if I feel like the drone is getting too close to something. Even with it programmed to stay at 91 meters above the surface, that doesn't mean that it can't fail to do that. After everything is set, then we launch. Once the drone reaches its max altitude, I'll tap the screen to focus the camera and then make sure that it's in manual focus and leave it there. The next several hours are spent watching the drone and charging batteries. Good times. There are a lot of options for flight planning applications. I use Drone Harmony because it gives me the most control over the camera and the drone. I strongly recommend that you find a flight planning application that does the same thing. Once you find one that you like, then practice using it because you're going to need to learn how the drone reacts with different apps. A good example is a battery swap. When I need to change the battery during the mission, I know that I need to pause the mission in the app, not on the controller. Then I flip the switch on my controller from A and then back to P. If I don't do it in that order, the drone will just hover there and not let me bring it back. If I hit the return to home button, then my mission will end and that means that I have to start over after the battery swap instead of continuing where I left off. After capturing images for all of the green areas, we had to move locations to capture the buildings. Up to this point, all of the images have been taken at a nadir angle, but to make buildings look good, you need to also get oblique images. For that, I'll use the DJI GO app and a point of interest flight. Even if you're just creating an orthomosaic, it's a good idea to take oblique images. It will help to prevent artifacts on the sides of buildings. Here's an image from a different project, but this shows what artifacts will look like. To capture the obliques, 
I set the camera to trigger every two or three seconds while moving around the building. Point the camera towards the building and fill the frame if you can safely get that close. Always be sure to turn the camera down so that it's at an angle that doesn't have the sky in the images. The drone needs to move either left or right, but in a smooth, continuous motion. Taking pictures as if you're going to make a video from the pictures. Don't ever leave the drone stationary and take pictures by turning the camera. That just won't work. Every image needs to be from a new location, even if that means one foot over. The last thing that I want to do before we leave the site is go over all of the images that we have already taken, just to make sure there's no problems. Okay, well, the image collection process is almost complete. The final step is the image analysis. We always make sure to check our images before we leave. We want to make sure that they all have geotags and that we have complete coverage of the area that we intended to map. The last thing that we want to do is get back to the office only to find out that we've missed an area or had images that for some reason didn't get geotagged properly and then they won't process.